Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be talking about general recommendations for DDR5 memory. So if you're new to PC building or if you're someone who has on an older motherboard, you know, maybe one that was using DDR4 or maybe even DDR3, there may be some questions you have around DDR5 RAM and general recommendations. Now, so if you want to run 4.6 of memory, so let's say you're building a desktop that you need a lot of memory for whatever reason, whether it's virtual machines or you're running some kind of like home server setup where you need a lot of like memory for either AI or whatever the use case is, you're probably going to run dual rank DIMMs for higher capacity or you're going to run four sticks of memory. And there's a lot of misinformation or misunderstanding about DDR5 because you know the first thing people hear about DDR5 is oh the RAM speeds are much much faster than DDR4. So for example in DDR4 3200, 3600 those are typically the upper bound limit of in terms of the rated speed that you could find. With DDR5 there's significantly higher speeds. You know the starting speeds are typically anywhere from 4800 to 5600 and then the higher speeds are you know 6000 or greater so the the rule of thumb is if you're running two sticks of ram or you're running single rank dims you can get up to pretty high speeds so for example if we were going to run two of these g skill flare x5s these are single rank so two of these together are is 32 gigabytes of ram so if we're running two of these, you know, that's that's only single rank DIMMs. So you could find capacities that exceed 8,000, for example, with this capacity, or even a 48 gigabyte capacity, which is what I personally recommend if you want to run two sticks of RAM at very high speeds. Now, if you want to run dual rank, so that means either each one of these would be 32 gigabytes of memory, so 32 plus 32, this is 64 gigabytes of RAM. Or if you have the newer style DIMMs, which have 48 gigabyte capacity per stick, this would be 48 plus 48, that would be 96 gigabytes of RAM across two sticks. So in that scenario, you can get up to 6400 with it if you're running two sticks total. But if you're running four sticks, then all of a sudden the numbers change. So in general, if you're running four single rank DIMMs, you can expect to run speeds of up to 6,400. Uh, somewhere around there is kind of the upper bound limit in terms of what you can expect to run. Now, if you're running four sticks of dual rank, realistic speeds for that configuration will be anywhere from 4,800 mega transfers up to maybe around 5,200 or 5,400 mega transfers if you're running say 128 gigabytes of ram so that's a total of four four 32 gigabyte dims or if you're running 192 gigabytes of ram with four 48 gigabyte dims the upper bound limit there for a typical desktop would be around 5200 now if you understand how to adjust the on die termination values on both the processor side and the dram side you can achieve higher speeds somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,600 or maybe even 6,000. We have a few videos on this channel that show how to do that, but that is not plug and play. However, there are some new memory kits that are coming out from Micron and Hynix, some new memory modules now. We're starting to see them pop up. G-Skill has one in particular that have very high density and are rated to run at an expo speed of around 6,000. So if you want it that to be plug and play, then you really need to buy a kit of memory that includes four sticks in the box. That way there's no guesswork because if you take, for example, let's say I have these two memory sticks. So let's go ahead and install these here. Let's say I started off with a micro center bundle that gave me these free, or I guess included, Flare X5 sticks. So if I have these two, normally you would have them in, you know, A1 and A2, like so. So you'd have them here in the second and the fourth memory slot. Well, what happens if 
you get a second kit of RAM. So what happens if I buy these and I want to run all four of them? Well, it is possible to do that. It's not recommended to do this because you're running mismatched memory kits, even though they're both from G-Skill. So in this scenario here, I have some Trident Z5s with RGB, but here are the original Flare X5s that were free with a Microsoft bundle. So if I wanted to run both kits together, I'd have to physically remove one of these. So let's say I remove this one over here. I'd have to move this one so that it is together with its twin, so to speak, on channel B. So I have B1 and B2. So now I can take my new kit of memory and I can install that on the A channel. So normally you wouldn't want to do this. You wouldn't want to have a new kit of memory and an old kit of memory together. But this configuration can work, but you won't be able to utilize XMP or Expo for it to post successfully. In this scenario, you'd have to manually set the speed to something like 4800 and see if that works with stability. And then you could probably go up to like 5200, maybe 5400, somewhere around there. But this is like worst case scenario where we have mismatched kits. But I wanted to illustrate this point. If you're wanting to buy another kit of memory because you need more capacity for your RAM, you can do that. You can leverage your existing kit and just get a new one. Ideally, you want two of the same exact kit though to make your life easier. Otherwise, if you are going to run mismatched kits like this, you need to make sure that your old kit is on one channel, so in this case, this is channel B, and your new kit is on channel A. Oftentimes I see people, you know, either running mismatched dims, and they're kind of like all spread out randomly, and then they're complaining that it's not working, or they can't get it to post, or they get some kind of error code that's not code 15, and it just doesn't go anywhere. So that's probably because the BIOS doesn't know what to do with the mismatched dims. So I hope you guys found this video somewhat useful. If you're new to building a PC or if you're upgrading to DDR5 and you were curious about the realistic expectations for memory speeds, especially when you're running four sticks and RAM. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks.